welcome to the second episode of What's What with Benji Watt. Uh, we basically have a New Zealand boxing recap, and we have a special guest today. We got Isaac Savage. Uh, what's up, Isaac? How's it going? What up, people? Good to be here. Yeah, man. So, you know, Benji is a boxing judge, an official, a box rec editor. And Isaac, he's a boxing reporter, boxing writer. He's also a fighter himself. Um, introduce yourself, Isaac, just for people that don't know you. Um, Isaac Savage. A lot of people probably know or well, have seen me around anyway. I'm a bit of a, um, a boxing fight fiend, fanatic. Um, I do a bit of MC, a bit of writing, a bit of commentary. So, yeah, just get involved as much as I can. And uh, Benji, uh, for those who don't know, uh, introduce yourself, man. Well, I'm Benji. I like long walks on beaches and I'm 26. <laughs> I'm also... <laughs> Sorry, I just can't help myself. What's wrong with me? Um, I uh, I do box rec. I'm a judge for NCPBA and I've done about, let's see, eight New Zealand titles, one WBO title and a bunch of other little tiny titles as well. So, uh, For those of you who don't know, here's Isaac. Oh, in the yeah. recent interview with what was it called? Uh, Weebox. Yeah, Weebox. That was pretty cool, Isaac. Good job, man. Thanks, guys. Hey, that was um, only just done a week ago, um, actually just before surgery. So I have been off for a week due to that. And I just want to do a bit of a shout out for the support I received during that, especially from Tony Angelo, who hosted the Art of War, um, late minute fill in from Benji Tipper, who's a DJ, but also MC that night. Uh, support from Regan Foley, who Xbox himself promoted, and Craig Thompson. Um, one of other uh, New Zealand's other promoters. So, yeah, I mean, look, back up and running. We all go through a few things. But I also want to make a shout-out to my boy, Kaikara France. He has box. We all know, we've all we all heard of him. He just got signed with the UFC. So shout-out to my boy, Kaikara France, doing amazing things uh, in New Zealand and the world. Yeah, we were quite worried about you because uh, um, when we heard uh, about what happened, it was like, oh, bugger. It's like, like all of us were actually quite genuinely worried I hope that... Uh, what has happened uh, um, that you weren't hurt too badly. And we're very glad that you're recovering now and hopefully you'll get a full recovery pretty soon. Yeah, mate, you know, no rest for the wicked, right? I mean, <laughs> we all we all get injuries and there's a lot of fighters out there that fight, you know, they're a lot harder than they're, they're made from a different cut of cloth. And um, yeah, man, just back on the back on the horse now, back ready to go and go out there and smash it. And tell me, what's that horse name? <laughs> all right so um eh? yeah let's pack into it benji what's what's the first thing you want to like to talk about okay so uh this week's been quite a sad week in boxing especially for uh fiji boxing as only just a couple of days ago uh we had the death of uh heavyweight boxer napoleon uh do you know much about uh, napoleon isaac Oh, uh, look, just from what you said in a lot of lo- local legends uh, in the New Zealand boxing scene, he was a very well-known trainer uh, in Fiji, you know, and trained a lot of um, island fighters. But I guess you can probably allude more on that, Benji, in terms of his reputation. Well, he was ranked number one at the time when he was so active uh, in Fiji. He's ranked in the top 100 of best Fiji boxer of all time so and he i believe is a amateur um fiji coach uh, uh for that uh, region so uh he's actually quite known and uh, and quite well loved in the fiji at, uh, in fiji boxing and he i believe was a fiji boxing champion it's always sad to see someone go especially so young you know only 40 years old yeah and uh, it's it's quite sad and like uh what's being reported is that he actually uh committed suicide in his uh in his gym which is actually i, I just can't imagine how his family and how all of his uh boxing uh his boxers feel um but yeah it's very it's very sad and i really like to uh put my heart, heart out to all the community the boxing community in fiji yeah, it says here that he retired from boxing at the age of 40 in November last year due to medical reasons. So, um, you know, uh, maybe not being able to box, you know, uh, or retiring for it, you know, due to the medical condition must have uh, have led to this, you know? 
Yeah, yeah, and I, I like I, just so everyone knows. If you are living in New Zealand or Auckland, if you actually have any of those thoughts where you might feel like uh, your inner voice is actually coming down on you, or you need some help, make sure you get in touch with someone like Lifeline, which the number is 0800 543 354. Or if you're under age of 20, we've got to, uh, sorry. Under age of 18, we've got youth line as well, or 800 376 sorry, 6633, something along those lines. <laughs> but um, yeah, if you ever have those thoughts of inner demons trying to take over, make sure you uh, reach out for help. And there we go, we've got the website uh, right up. up yeah, there. 0800 Lifeline. Yeah, exactly, 0800 Lifeline. We've also got the crisis team and kids line as well, so yeah. All right. Um, All okay. right. Yeah, condolences to Napoleon and his family. Yeah, rest in peace and commiserations, com condolences to friends, Farno and um, the boxing community around the world. Yeah. All right. So uh, next topic. Um, this uh, is Junior Fire just recently got a ranking in the WBO this week. Number twelve. Yeah, I saw that he got rated to number was it number twelve or thirteen? Correct me uh, num wrong. It's number twelve. Uh, originally, they they put Junior Far from Germany, <laughs> and it was yeah. the biggest laugh like uh, all across Facebook. It's like Junior Far from Germany, nonetheless. But they eventually corrected it. And look, he's doing great things. Um, we all know him too for for beating Joseph Parker back in the amateur days. Um, obviously, signed to Lou Bella now. His recent performance. Uh, in New Zealand didn't impress all, but he got the strap, he got the win, a W is a W, Myers, and look, he's just climbing the ranks, you know, it's only only good things from here, right? Yeah, and like we said in the last, in the last episode that he actually had uh, quite a, a big injury to his, I believe it was his elbow, um, and he he didn't want to pull out because of all the pressure that he was felt from, like, Mark Cadell, oh, well, his manager, Mark Cadell, uh, well, he, does, he wasn't getting the pressure from him, but, like, um, you know, uh, like, the, just the felt of the pressure for all these expenses that's put on him, you know? So, uh, yeah, the rank. Yeah, if you look at that list, look at, look at that list, and that's perfect, Josh, like, how stacked is that? you got Brizel, Miller, White, Povican, who's obviously fighting uh, Anthony Joshua soon, Tyrone Spong, ex kit boxer, and then you see Far in there just under 12. Love to see Far and Spong. Uh, depending on the way it works out, who do you think he would actually get matched up with on, on that top 15, Benji? Oh, that's actually quite a tricky one because, like, well, uh, uh, I think that would be actually a good idea. It's probably like an Asia Pacific um, fight. So we've got like two Asia, well, if you're not including Joseph Parker, we've got two Asia Pacific boxers in there, which is uh, from Japan. I'm very sorry if I mispronounce this. Fujimoto and um, Zhang. Uh, from China as well. That Fujimoto fight was supposed to be matched with Parker like a while ago, right? They, they were oh, trying to make that happen. Years ago. This was back right after Boi Tapua. And his uh, losses to Hamona, right? Uh, well, yeah, he... he I, can't, I really can't... Yeah, I think so. Yeah, he, you got me on that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm the, one, at, <laughs> I'm the one with the facts. <laughs> if you look at slot 3-2, Jarrell Miller, if you haven't oh, seen this guy, he's an absolute beast. If you looked at the weigh-in for Povican... Anthony Joshua probably about a week ago with the, the um, press conference, Miller got in the face of AJ. And if you look at their body types, Miller is thicker than a Snickers right next to AJ. <laughs> he's huge. And for far to be in the same league as, as these world, you know, giants, these, these colossal type human boxers, it's awesome. It's amazing. He's doing great things. Now, uh, there is one thing, though, is that I'm not calling anyone out here, but there was actually quite a little bit of negative uh, backlash on social media in regards to uh, Junior Far receiving this ranking, and not just this ranking, but such a high ranking, too. Because he went, he didn't go to 15 when he won the title. He went straight up to 12. Hey, haters are going to hate, and <laughs> it's the only way up for him, and, and good on him. He's, he's got the strap. He's following the path. He's doing everything he needs to do to get there. Um, hey, yeah. I'm, I'm in full support of and I, I look forward to his next fight. Hopefully he can perform like he did. Um, I forget the guy he KO'd in, in the States. Was it looked like an African-American guy? And he absolutely just flatlined the guy and then was in beast mode. And for him to come out like that, do that in America, I just want to keep seeing him do have performances like that. 
actually, I had a conversation with Mark Cadell about that, actually. And he said that uh, he uh, Junior wanted to make a big impression that night. And he came out of the um, entrance going, ah, kind of thing. And the, all his, his group was like, oh, holy crap. <laughs> they just did not expect that whatsoever. And this went out uh, uh, showing his inner mongrel. <laughs> Which is uh, w what uh, Shane Cameron has been saying for a long time, is that he needs to find that inner mongrel to uh, dominate the heavyweight division. Hey, look, we had a good chat with him last time. You know, he's been sparring um, the likes of Malik Scott, um, David Light, who we'll get on to. I know I'm not jumping the gun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably a good segue into that. But um, you tell me, Benji, what, what are your thoughts on the great white David Light? <laughs> We'll, we'll get into that soon, <laughs> but but I, I will say this uh, about David Light is that um, we had an interview of, uh, with him before his Daniel Ty fight, and he actually said that he saw an interview that Glad Rap, by the way, you can watch Glad Rap interviews right here on YouTube. Um, yeah. <laughs> boom. Um, but yeah, he said in an interview with Glad Rap that he saw an interview in Glad Rap with Mick Scott that said that David Light was a pain in the ass to spar. So it was like, and he felt like, oh, wow. Well, it wasn't that interview. It was, an, it was the pre-fight interview. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, we, we actually had to ask Malik Scott a couple of times and then shout out to Mark Cadell. Hey, you know, he had shouted out to, the, to Mark, who's that pain in the ass? Who's that annoying guy? And then he's like, oh, yeah, David Light. So we actually mentioned the name to him. He didn't register. Yeah. And then we actually said it again and he, he, he go, oh, yeah, David Light. So, for David Light as a cruiser to be giving a guy like Malik Scott, who's an absolute giant and yeah. a well established box of trouble, man, looking forward to um to Light, you know, and, and I, what he does. I, I like what um, David Light's here. It's like, oh, it's such an honor to be called a pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah, there, there's, yeah he's, he's a pretty down to earth guy, though. Even when we were watching your interview, him, he was pretty relaxed. It was almost like this guy's going to war soon and. He looks like he's just, you know, going to be go out for dinner or read a book. He's so chilled. <laughs> well, you could say he's going out to dinner to uh, demolish his <laughs> opponent for meat. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's go uh, quickly. Let's uh, touch up about uh, what's happening with Junior Putty. Um, he's just uh, being uh, announced that he's moving from boxing to MMA. Uh, as we all know, he's having some contract contractual issues or management issues with uh, his team but we won't go into that but what is interesting is is that he's uh, but he's moving to MMA at the moment Junior Putty. Yeah look we all know Junior the red eye pit bull can, can punch um, I'd love to see him in, in more fights um, for whatever reasons he hasn't it, it, look he's probably certainly trying but to, for him to go from boxing MMA I feel sorry for any guy jumping in the ring from, especially in four ounce gloves. We've got to remember that, guys. When these guys jump in the boxing in the ring, tens, twelves, that he's going to MMA fight four ounce gloves. It's just wraps and then a bit of leather over those knuckles with a oh. hundred twenty kilogram man behind them. Yeah, and like uh, Glad Rap has uh, amazingly found the post that announces next fight in MMA uh, against uh, Cameron. What's his name? Tukua. Tuka. Tu tu. Tuka, Tuka. It will be a good fight. I mean, both both massive boys. Um, they're going to throw it down. There's obviously some pictures of uh, the pit bull fighting back in the day. He looks a little bit heavier there, and he's certainly he's certainly dropped the you know the kegs since then. So him with MMA gloves in better shape with the hands he's got, mm. it's going to be one hell of a fight. Where, when and where can we see that fight? So that's August thirty first. I can't remember uh, where oh, the... Oh, it's on the Bar Barramore League Gar show, hosted by... Yeah. Uh, well, BLG or yeah. Barramore League Gar, and uh, I think the promoters are uh, Seal Himuli. Yeah, and, uh, um, yeah, it's going to be a good fight. Da oh, Daniel Ty is also on that fight night as well. But uh, I... F uh, it's just one of... It's going to be a good fight that... Uh, actually, what's funny is Junior... Far, oh, sorry, Junior Far. I don't know what I'm saying. Junior Putty uh, cornered uh, Cameron Tukua's uh, opponent just happened last Saturday, who was uh, Mossy Afo. Yep, yeah, that was a good, yeah. good fight as well. It was a good fight, and it's interesting that after, um, after Mossy lost against Cameron, Junior Putty is uh, jumping in the octagon, per se, to fight... Uh, maybe 
you know, on behalf of, well, not on behalf, but maybe in vengeance, maybe? Hey, look, uh, it was to, to be honest, it was a bit of a surprise to me, but I'm never one to argue with a good scrap, especially in MMA gloves. I mean, I've, I've never seen Junior Party fight MMA, and I'd, I'd love to. Obviously, he's got the boxing skill, but for him to jump in the MMA ring with another guy, I mean, it's going to be absolute fireworks, and someone's going out in a body bag. Yeah. Well, um, I believe that uh, Junior Party has only had one MMA fight, and he actually took the fight on uh, last, uh, on like very last moment, like kind of thing. And he actually ended up winning that fight uh, by knockout. Do you hear it? Well, hey, look, he might get the same result, but I'm, I'm pretty sure his opponent is not going to go down without a fight. And yeah, I mean, it's 31st August. I think it's at the um, ABA, isn't it? Ah, I'm not sure. It, it probably will be. Uh, <laughs> glad Rock, can you look at that link again? <laughs> yeah, well, um, oh, it's, um, closer to we the time, we'll, we'll, we'll try to get done. On Where top of that event, or at least get some sort of coverage. Born to fight, Barama Oliga. I know uh, for sure. ASB Stadium. Oh, ASB Stadium. ASB. Yeah, there's a few titles on that night. It's going to be a great show. I think a lot of fighters from all around New Zealand are coming for that and overseas. So, hey, wherever you are, try to get to that. I don't think it's going to be on television, but hey, you've got to stay tuned to for Gladrat. Gladrat may be there or, or someone I, else. Yeah. I I believe it's generally actually uh, the other crowd that does it, the other filming crowd. Oh, but let's oh, let, let, okay. let's 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 not mention them. <laughs> okay. Okay. Move, 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 move. Okay. <laughs> Daniel Ty versus David Lai. What an amazing fight that was. Man, <laughs> look, oh, look, and, and I was so gutted I couldn't make it. I, I was watching it actually from bed uh, and commenting. I didn't see too many other comments. I saw a few. And I saw people watching it because I, I saw a recording. I won't mention the name who was recording it live. It was great. Loved it. Thank you to that person. Uh, it was just amazing. I mean, to see Light go from cruiser up to heavyweight, you could see the weight difference. I mean, you could see him getting pushed around, but his skill was a little bit higher than um, Daniel Tai. Well, it's not just that. He wasn't that far from Cruiserweight as well because he was still 94 kgs, which is 4 kgs to, uh, above Cruiser. And I think Daniel Tai came in at 107. So there was over, what was it, 13 kgs difference between the two as well. You know, I wasn't there live, but I, and I can only imagine, but I do feel that some of the shots that Daniel Tai was landing were um, probably making um, David like quite weary. I mean... It wasn't a fight where David like just cruised through and absolutely demolished and bulldozed him. It was a fight that he won. I, w yeah. I wouldn't say, uh, well, pretty comfortably. But, man, you know, you can never let your guard down, Daniel Ty. He can just lights out anyone in, in a night. And he went the distance with Junior Farr. And he's gone the distance with many other um, champs as well. So, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a walkover by any means. Would you agree? Oh, no, it wouldn't be a walkover. I think this, well, this is the first time... Daniel Light has got on a oh, Daniel Light. I keep on doing this. David Light. <laughs> In fact, I think uh, David even said it. It's David. It's like, Shit, sorry. <laughs> um, David, uh, uh, it was the first time David went to the full six rounds, and um, which is a great thing since he's uh, only gone to maximum fourth round. And also, this is the first time he's actually lost a round in professional boxing as well, which is actually quite a, a big thing. But, you know, watching David, he's he's always so impressive every fight. You know, other fights in Cruiserweight, he just absolutely blistered through the competition. It almost seemed like there was no competition, hence why he's jumped up to heavyweight. Do you see him just fighting heavyweight fights now, Benji, due to lack of uh, competition in Cruiser? Well, I've spoken to um, Isaac Peach. I've spoken to David Light, and mainly from Isaac Peach. Um, they are frustrated about how everyone's trying to avoid him. Well, either avoid or sidestep. Um, it's like I've spoken to a lot of people, and for instance, Navosa, um, he said that he wants to fight anyone in the cruiserweight division apart from David Light. And then it's the same with... Uh, Panuve, he didn't say it himself, but uh, there has been comments that, oh yeah, we'll accept the fight if they, if it's blindfolded with a hand wrapped behind our back or on one leg, um, which means that yeah, we'll fight any cruiserweight but David Light. So that's the extent of what's happening with the cruiserweight division, and plus all the injuries that's happening uh, in the cruiserweight. So there is no 
good quality opponent for David Light in the Cruiserweight division, which means he's got no choice but to step up. And, and, and do you blame him? I mean, like, hey, if what you're saying is true, I don't know if it is or isn't. I'm just going on your word. Um, if no one's accepting to fight him in Cruiser, what are you meant to do? And he's such a talented fighter. He's, he's only got no other choice but to move up, right? Well, there's, uh, I've been hearing that there's a potential fight against David Light and Junior Putty, maybe. Um, and also, there's also talks with David Light and Lance Bryant. <laughs> I saw that. Look. I saw that smile. <laughs> hey, Buster, he's, I love that guy, and he, he's an awesome scrapper, all the way down from the uh, mighty one or two. Oh, yeah, I, I went down there for the first time to judge, and wow, th those events were amazing. Oh, it'd be a good, good um, get together. You'd probably have every man and his dog at the stadium. Oh. <laughs> you know, it'd well, be uh, a great turnout. Well, uh, put some of the Auckland events that we've been to to shame because, like, they were like fully um, sold out uh, shows with all the corporate tables, maybe 100 or 200 GAs, and like fully packed out. Everyone knows everyone, uh, and like, it's like very close community. And here's Lance Bryant right now with but his for record. To, for you to put that out there, Benji, to say Lance Bryant and David, like, potential, do we have a date in place? Do we have something even April, about like October, November? April. Say again? April. Mate, that's... Come on. Is it, you, you can't... You, that's so far away. You, you're telling yeah, but, but, that, that rem remember, remember, um, Lance Bryant, um, as I said in the last um, uh, episode, has just had a, um, a, a career-threatening injury to his elbow oh, okay. that uh, he, he had to have surgery for, and that if he actually um, does maybe like a very strong hit to that elbow again, could end his career full stop. Okay. So, um, yeah, what's, it's... What's sorry? the potential of Panavi and David Light? <laughs> well... Man, that's a good fight. I think um, th there was talks between Panavi and Navosa, but um, I don't know what, what's happened to there. I think uh, Panavi versus Patrick Ferguson came in, for, uh, came in as a bigger deal, so they took that fight instead. Is that okay. a cruiserweight fight or...? Yeah, cruiserweight fight. Pa Patrick Ferguson is a cruiserweight. Okay, so... Um... Panube is going to need to lose a lot. Well, he was, I know he was 98 in the last fight against uh, the MMA fighter, but I think that's I love, because. I love that, that weigh in when they weighed in and uh, Gladrat was there and it was, a bit, it was saying cruiserweight. And then um, Pat, Pat the official said, <laughs> that's not cruiserweight, that's heavyweight. <laughs> well, I think it's just that. Um, Everyone was expecting cruiserweight. Panuve is a cruiserweight boxer, and then like this, uh, Panuve uh, came in, weighed in at ninety. Maybe they got the weights wrong. Maybe no, no, maybe no, no. Got the weights wrong. What no, well, remember, it was uh, everything was very much a last minute thing. Oh, okay. So um, uh, no one actually informed Pat that his opponent was going to be heavyweight. So Panuve didn't actually make the extra effort to go down to cruiserweight. Oh, well, that's yeah, a fair yeah. enough because so it was a mis yeah. miscommunication. Yeah, and just it's completely it's miscommunication. Okay. Yeah. Got so, love Pat, a legend. Oh, uh, absolute legend. He's the president of NCPBA, and uh, he he's been uh, saying to like start delegating uh, some some jobs to some of the younger officials so that uh, more people could get more experience, and that way the next generation can slowly take over, um, so that. NCPPA can still have a future because you know if old officials hold on to everything and they end up dying then us younger officials will not know what to do because well we've got no experience no one's showing us the ropes or how to do things oh very cool very cool and we can't forget our, our man lieutenant dan there in the picture <laughs> one of um, new zealand's oh, i guess most popular mcs oh is... yeah aside uh, uh, like there's always a when you think about MCs, there's Dan Hennessy and Isaac Savage. <laughs> <laughs> moving on, moving on. Okay, okay. So um, this pro this is going to go uh, hand in hand with the current topic of David Light versus Daniel Tai. So Daniel Tai actually had a viral infection and was on antibiotics as well as uh, for that fight as well. Yeah, but hey, we all know the tyres. We know that you know how tough they are. You know, there's Jordan, there's Daniel. 
um, the sister Monica, they are just, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll die fighting. That's their motto. They always come out to fight. I don't think, even though I don't know how serious the viral um, infection was, but I just can't see anything stopping Daniel Ty. He's just an absolute monster. He'd, he'd come out um, yeah. or die. Well, uh, they said that no excuses, there is no excuse in boxing, but um, they did want to mention just this, just so that we are aware of. So even if he was at his best, or even if he wasn't, he still actually ended up showing up despite the fire of infection as well, and that's that's totally. a big thing. I mean, he's the man, and a lot of, the, um, you know, some people don't turn up if hardly boxes but you know we, we get times people pulling out for all sorts of reasons excuses the ties i don't think that man you'd have to put them in a bloody wheelchair for them not to turn up daniel ty is the epitome of tough right yeah Understand? yeah it's great to see the whole family turning up as well like we've got the full family of george and josh ty uh josh ty, yeah. yeah monica ty and whatnot i remember i remember i was like walking past josh ty, i was like oh there's josh ty i was like Oh, he's actually quite cute. Um, then going up to stairs to commentate. <laughs> I mean, look, putting that, that is, I grew up watching Jordan Ty, um, you know, obviously from the kickboxing background. He's had his boxing fights too, had titles. They are just legends, legends. And you, you talk to them, they're so down to earth, so humble. And then you, when they get in the ring, they flip the switch and turn into an absolute murderer. Uh, it's just so amazing to, to see. And Yeah. And look, here, here we are, we've got to Jordan Ty here. We've got Jordan Ty at the event, so it's great to see family, like, supporting. And, yeah. So, um, all right, moving on. Uh, so, we just I just found this out yesterday that Giovanna Perez has just gotten her New Zealand citizenship. Congratulations. Yeah, and it's, it's great because, like, she has so much pride in New Zealand. And, like, for someone that comes over to, from Brazil or anywhere else from uh, the world comes to New Zealand and love it so much and have so much pride in the, in that country. That's 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 great. I mean, she's an amazing athlete. She's you know um, you know spring truck. She's still jumping in the show. In New Zealand, how it's done. Got the title. Got the strap. She's definitely one of New Zealand's toughest yeah. fighters. Let alone being female. Putting female aside, she is one of New Zealand's toughest. Great person. Great fighter. And her body shots. A killer, you know. She's she's one to watch, and I'm looking forward to her next fight, whatever that may be. What is it, Benji? Do we have anything in the works or we'll know about her next fight? I know, but no one else is not allowed to know, so I can't say a word. I'm not saying a thing. <laughs> you can give me all that, that those eyes all you want, but I'm not saying a thing. <laughs> like I know that four people know, and that's it. Is it and, well, okay? At least give us a clue, man. Is it New Zealand or international? It is in New Zealand. <laughs> Now, the only reason I say too, because you know, you look at the, the female ranks, you've got, you know, um, Le, um, Nailini. Nailini Healer. Nailini. Um, you've got um, Ali. Uh, uh, Ali Malasia. Uh, Auri Malasia. Auri. And you've got also um, the, the Daniels, who just fought. So the, this, they're all quite a small, small circle of female fighters. So I'll be interested to see who Giovanna's fighting next. And I'm hoping it's outside of that circle because uh, I'll say it's a merry go round. I'll say it's bigger than that, but I'm not saying anything else. Um, and don't ask me, don't ask me, because it is actually quite a big announcement. You just have to wait a little bit longer to get things, uh, so they can get things in their affairs and orders before they announce it. But it is actually a very big thing. Just don't, we can't, I just can't say anything Next about it. Next couple of weeks, will we expect an announcement? I hope so, yes, yes. They, they said that just need a couple of weeks just to sort things out, but it should be announced soon. Sorry, Benji, who'd you say that uh, Giovanna was fighting? Oh, you can try as much as you can, but you're not going to get me to get it out of me. Selling the sizzle. Um, <laughs> I'm actually quite excited to know myself, but I will await the announcement, and I'm sure New Zealand will um, be, you know, be, be waiting in anticipation as well, because that, that does sound like a bit of an exciting matchup, whatever it may and be. Let, let's break down Giovanna, who she is. She's a two-time... New Zealand professional boxing champion with NZNBF and PBC. She's uh, six in, uh, in uh, box rec. As, uh, that's the first time I actually saw that. Um, that she, um, So thank, thank you, Glad Rap, for showing that because I had no idea about that. She's second in WBA. Uh, she's going to be ranked second in IBF after the 
um, the uh, IBF rankings. So she's ranked quite high, and she I think she's like five wins, one loss. So, oh, she's a true champ, and she's just one of those ones. I feel sorry for anyone in the ring with her, but she only she comes to fight, and she only fights tough competition. And when you got that belt. You can't really have easy fights. It's only it's only only gets harder to to retain that title. So, once again, you're not going to tell us. You're going to give us any clues? No, no. I've given you enough clues that it's, it's big. So, so, so. Uh, but that's uh, it's great to see a boxer that's actually really genuine as well. Because like you just like when you speak to Giovanna, she's always uh, genuine. She's very positive. She's classy, and that, that's another word to use. That she's classy, and also it's a big deal for like especially for like the LGBT community, especially for myself as well. Being first lesbian boxer in New Zealand, or first gay boxer in New Zealand in the LGBT community to win a title. So it, it's uh, I take a lot of pride for that. She takes a lot of pride in that as well. No, it's good to see full support um, for Giovanna and the team. And I know everyone at Mayhem Boxing will be backing her as well. You know, it's a great gym. They've got, um, you know, Terry or Terrence, sorry, down there trading her, uh, Smiley. Uh, there's yeah. a few other champs as well. I'm just trying to think off the top of my head. Actually, um, now that you've brought this video up, I've got a little bit of an announcement to make that's involving uh, Giovanna's uh, opponent that you just showed up there, uh, Tessa. From so Tessa is now going to be fighting Lani Daniels for the for the Pro Box uh, title, uh, which is like another sanctioning body, Pro Box New Zealand, um, for the Pro Box title in Cambridge that we'll, we'll be covering uh, in Cambridge Thank later you. this year. Wow, that's a that's a big fight. Perfect. And uh, this is going to be uh, a super middleweight fight, which is uh, the first time Lani Daniels going down and as a professional in super middleweight, the first uh, super middleweight contest for a title in New Zealand for the female. So it's it's like it's quite big. Oh look, it's it's great to see these women fighters and and the caliber of New Zealand fight female fighters is is extremely high. Like, Look at um the all all of them are ranked and or you know obviously the top five and I'd like to see them fight more international fights now or, or the you know the woman overseas in Australia because it seems like they've fought each other at least once or twice sometimes even three times so uh, it would be great to see them start fighting some some of the Aussie counterparts. Well, it's quite difficult because like in New Zealand we've got more heavyweight female boxers well we used to uh, than anywhere else in the world. Australia has no heavyweight boxers. Um, apart female from, boxers. Fe yeah, female boxers. Uh, the last one they had was Lisa Van... I'm very sorry to not remember the last name, but she was like a gold medalist uh, for shot put. Oh, there we go. Lisa <laughs> Marie. Bunch, a bunch yeah. of female killers, right? I mean, yeah. it's an it's interesting stat, Benji, that we have, um, you know, considering per capita for just over 4.5 million people, and all these female hero fighters, yet Australia's quadruple the size of us, and you're saying they don't have near the same level as competition? Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, they've got like a lot of, a lot of the lighter weights, but none of the heavyweights. And I guess that's, I guess, it's unfortunate, but it makes us great in a way that we've got heavyweights on our side. Can't all right, so, right. yeah. Uh, so let's go on to the next one, which is, uh, oh, Oh, sorry. I just saw Kirsty's profile, and <coughs> she's <laughs> Kirsty. She's such a great boxer, but it was so unfortunate how she was forced to retire because uh, she had a benign tumor uh, in her brain, and and like it, it, she can live a normal life, but if she boxes, that could burst. So, uh, and she had a lot of potential as well. So, yeah, she was a great fighter. Uh, she, I know, I, I over, overuse this line, but she always came to fight. She was up there too with the top mm. female fighters, and it's unfortunate that she had such a freak—I wouldn't even say freak medical um, occurrence like that. Uh, yeah. But you know, when you've got something like that, I think safety comes first. Um, if yeah, <laughs> at any moment it could jeopardise your life. And she was ranked in uh, ranked ninth in the world, and she, alongside Nylene he Nylene Hilu, started this uh, women's revolution to have heavyweight boxing in New Zealand, and that was on the Lisa Lewis uh, uh, Royal Rampage show back in 2016. It, it's come back. It's that is going back. back. Some time now. I was actually commentating with Michael Katsidis. Yeah. If you don't know who Michael Katsidis is, 
you know, in boxing. He is the yeah. man, the size of a jockey, but will put down heavyweights. He's an absolute monster. Yeah, and looking at that uh, that video of those two women, uh, that's really where the history began with heavyweight boxing for women in New Zealand. So it's such a it's such a you know it's such an honour just to be part of that. I think I, did I judge that fight? No, I didn't judge that fight. Um, but uh, yeah, it was a great fight. All right, uh, let's go on to. Craig Thompson's next show, which is happening this Friday. Um, so uh, we're still waiting on the official announcement for the pro fights, but as we all know, Craig Thompson always does great shows. They always He always brings up um, – it's always quite regular shows as well. But this is a small show um, in at the Takapuna Rugby Club, and he's got just like a lot of good corporates, upcoming corporates. So, yeah, it's uh, exciting to – See another show in North Shore. We haven't had one for a while, actually. If you look at the box rec site too, he's got Gunner, Panuve, and Chauncey lined up. So if those three guys fight anyone, that that alone is um, worth even even seeing Gunner Gunner fight. He's so you know high caliber. And if um, those three fight, awesome. I know the corporate um, card is always lined and stacked from Craig yeah. Thompson, so it's going to be a good show. Well, what's it called? Um, not War on the War for Shore. Sure. The War on the Shore. Yeah, the sixth show of War on the Shore. And you know, Craig Thompson, we all we all know him as a promoter. He's always putting good shows on. Actually, one of my posters yeah. that, that, that was his, his last show. Um, that's been there for ages. And he's actually doing a female um, card. I don't know if I'm jumping the gun here, but he's doing a fe- female eight woman. In yeah. Cards. Yeah, we we mentioned that on the last episode. It's it's something that I've been working hard with uh, Craig Thompson because like uh, female fights is kind of like I'm a major advocate for women fights in New Zealand, and he's agreed because since the middleweight tournament was such a success, he wanted to take it that step further and um, put uh, heavyweight women boxers um, uh, a go. And well, as we all know, the winner of that tournament gets the IBF. Uh, uh, mandatory position uh, for the world title and three thousand dollars cash. And have we got any names thrown in the hat yet for this female lineup? Yep. Well, so we've got Nailini Hilu, uh, who who's obviously being former top ten herself. Uh, we've got uh, Caroline Daniels, who's uh, multi- who's fought Nailini Hilu six times in amateurs and multiple uh, um, boxing champion yep. in the amateurs. Uh, I was just like trying to remember off the top of my head. Ashley Campbell, who has fought both Caroline Daniels and the next person I go and mentor, which is who you might know, Razi Poa, uh, who's uh, more known in the MMA and kickboxing circuit. Uh, Gina Kola, Kola, or Kolo, and uh, what was her last name? That was just uh, told to me earlier before. Um, I'm sorry, I have to, I have to look I'm sure it'll come to us, but going back to the Dare to Be Great, these eight-man tournaments, they are such a trajectory um, way into one, getting a bit of cash, two, getting the strap, and then three, getting um, ranked or lined up on, on the world rankings. We just had the last one with Tej, who took out the yeah. t- bit of a dark horse there, and from my understanding, he's actually fighting for a world title this weekend. Uh, it wasn't World Title, it was a WBA Oceania title, um, but uh, he, it's against someone, Sam Solomon, uh, who uh, this practically could lead up to a World Title after this fight, especially um, after, well, I guess, three wins from the tournament. Hey, but if you, if, mate, Sam Solomon, or Solomon, however you want to pronounce it, absolute kickboxing legend. You know, he actually started off in kickboxing and then went to boxing. He's had so many fights. This will be a. I don't think this is going to be a walkover for Tej at all. But we all saw Tej come to New Zealand. We didn't know too much about him, and he completely ripped the the competition apart, taking apart everyone in a real walk forward, bullish, brutal style. Yeah, and he is just practically uh, like practically like cut them up, put them in a piece of bun, and ate a steak sandwich with them. So uh, <laughs> it was just, it was like a complete walkover for him. I mean, like. It's also shows. Uh, I want to like put like uh, take my hat off to Harley Love, who is the only person to not get knocked out by Tej as well. 
you know, Harley Love, you know, multiple um, uh, kickboxing champion, um, trained out of City League Gar, tall, rangy fighter, always comes to scrap. And that's what I always, I always back in the kickboxers because they, they, <laughs> come, they come with a little bit more mongrel at times because that's that's the way kickboxing is. You can, you can actually win fights by being a mongrel, whereas in boxing, it's the sweet science and that's exactly what Tej um, displayed yeah. that night. Well, I would like to say that uh, kickboxers are generally the underdogs for boxing because th sometimes transferring from kickboxing to boxing can be difficult since they lose the fact that they lose the use of their legs, well, use of, the use of their kicking legs at least. Um, their punches isn't as, uh, what I've been told, isn't as strong as like a boxer's punch, uh, but that changes uh, obviously in proper training. And like um, sometimes uh, they try to use their legs as a defense and they get in trouble for it in a boxing fight. So it's just kind of like the, the I feel like they're the underdog in boxing. And when they win, it's like, that, that's great. It's uh, good on them. Yeah, it's always good to see. I mean, um, you see more kit boxers go to boxing than the other way around and purely for the fact that boxing's a bit more established, there's more money, you can make more of a career out of it and that's mm. you know, why the likes of um, you know, Chad Dawson, Sam Solomon, John Wayne Pars uh, have dabbled in in boxing. Okay, and I just found a name is Eleanor Samuels. Uh, she's a boxer from Stu Chambers gym, which I believe is in Palmerston North or down south in the north uh, Southern North Island. Yep, so the uh, fight she, shop, the fight shop in Palmerston North, Stu Chambers. Yep. She, she, uh, so she's going to be the sixth person for the um, uh, women's uh, eight tournament. Well, that's great. I mean, it's good to see a real representation again from the one or two. Stu Chambers, I mean, very illustrious trainer here yeah. in New Zealand, more so kickboxing, jiu-jitsu, MMA. But like I said, when these people come over, all these kickboxers, the MMA fighters, to boxing, especially for a tournament for cash. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, they, they throw down. Yeah. Okay, let's jump to the next su subject. We've got the Anzac show that's happening on Saturday and Sunday. So this is like a full uh, uh, amateur show, which is practically fine. Uh, their marketing campaign is practically fine in the next Joseph Parker, which is great because we need to find someone young to bring up in boxing so that uh, boxing doesn't go back down again because we don't want boxing to be boring. We don't want boxing to, like, die off. We need someone... If we, see, we need someone to represent our country as well and that if, so we can get people interested in boxing. And these sorts of shows, especially in the amateur shows, they kind of uh, do that. Um, what do you think? Well, we've got to remember the likes of David Tour, uh, Anthony jo uh, um, Joseph <laughs> Parker... Uh, Junior Farr, uh, Daniela Smith, they all started in these amateur tournaments and Jeepers, if Glad Rapper had been back around then, would have some amazing gold. Um, just footage yeah. that would be priceless. And this is what we were doing this weekend. We're going to capture these up and comers. You know, you've got um, AJ Tongia. Man, he can hit. He can hit like a, and he's built like a brick. He absolutely floors people and he does not look like a heavyweight, but he is. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, AJ Tongia. Um, yep. Oh, you said there's going to be a couple of special guests. Um, oh, sorry, yep. before I go into the guests, Finesse is also fighting. He's a, an up-and-comer, very powerful, a little bit lighter, um, but, man, one to watch. Yeah, you know, exactly. Once he cracks amateurs, he's going to – he will hopefully crack the, the pro scene. And I just see as a, him as one of the other promising fighters um, coming out of the amateur ranks. Yeah, and we've also got Lee uh... – Lee through in is that how he's Lee Fru, um, who yep. is cousin of Joseph Parker and um, com, uh, the Youth Commonwealth Games bronze medalist, uh, which is actually a big deal, and uh, went over to the World uh, Championship representing New Zealand as well. Oh look, and she's so young. I don't, I don't. I think she's still late teens, mid teens. Um, so youth is generally like 16, 17 year olds. And, and for her to be at the skill level she is, I've seen her spar. Um, I've seen her obviously fight and she is so ahead of her time. Like, yeah. you know, like I said, she's probably only 16 to 18, but to have that skill level and to be boxing on the, on the world stage, the caliber she's at. Oh, Future she's, world she's, champion. She's, she's built for it and she's, she's only going to go up and uh, I'm really, it's really exciting to be covering her now. Yeah. 
Uh, and also I've got uh, Sonny Tiki Clark, who was actually just fighting this last weekend as well. Which, and, uh, wait, yeah. him. can you tell us a bit more about him? Or... So, <laughs> he, so he's from Christchurch. He's, I believe, a uh, trained under Phil Shatford. He actually lost, I think he lost his fight uh, the, uh, last weekend. He's a New Zealand champion as well. Hey, at least not Shetford, uh, Phil Shetford, who's trainer of Bowen, who just yeah. you know, beat Shea Brock. So obviously comes from a well-established mm -hmm. gym, a good gym, good sparring yeah. partner, et cetera. I, I, said in, I said in the commentary of that fight that there's uh, three people that I love watching, uh, not just like in the ring, but outside the ring. And that's uh, Vasco, <laughs> who's one of the loudest uh, corner people. I, I love watching him. Isaac Peach, again, he's one of the loudest... Uh, um corner people always so loud and uh now it's just um as i discovered from uh junior Farr's uh last fight uh phil shetford when bowen morgan and shay brock uh fight happen and he's also the loudest person uh, um uh, I, in the corner as well if you're gonna give it to an if you're gonna give an award out it's got to go to our boy vasco no i mean it's almost like you need a restraining order for the guy i love the pets, man. <laughs> he is the man and he's so passionate like how can you not love to see the enthusiasm, enthusiasm and passion from uh, a coach, trainer, um, corner person? He's he's all for the fighters. We should have, like uh, um, have like each person in the, um, in the corner and like see who can yell the who can yell the loudest and who can be the most entertaining in the corner. Let's <laughs> so, <Vesco. Vesco. laughs> do a poll. We'll do a poll on. <laughs> we had the interview with him. This is probably a year or two ago, and. And he's just incredible to talk to, like really energetic, um, speaks his mind. It's He's just like a firecracker, man. Uh, he's just, he's actually been in, uh, um, in uh, Thailand on holiday. Oh, just just, oh, just having fun. Yeah, yeah. So that's just just ran random uh, knowledge there. Uh, special guests for um, this uh, Anzac show, we've got David Nikea who we always know as two-time Commonwealth Games gold medalist, and Troy Garton, who's uh, Commonwealth Games female bronze medalist of 2018 as well. And I just uh, uh, got told before I, I got on to this uh, uh, session that uh, the boxing is still going to be at the Olympic Summer Games in Tokyo, which a lot of people were worried oh. that they weren't be. So um, it's great to see that boxing is still going to be at the Olympics. Perfect. Hey, well, um, hopefully um, we'll have, we have a really, really good chat with David and Troy over the weekend. Obviously, David's just come back from winning more golds. Um, love to see what his thoughts are, if he's going to go again, going to go pro. We really don't know. Uh, probably going to find out this weekend. Troy Garton just coming back from ACL injury. This woman is an absolute beast. Only been boxing for like two or three years. And to go from from a beginner to becoming a world contender, yeah, yeah. States, giving them a run for their money, getting bronze, probably narrowly just missing out on silver gold. What, two, three years training is incredible. I don't, I don't even know how you even compare that to any other um, athlete or, or person in a sport. And it's like same, uh, same camp as Giovanna Perez and yep, Avosa totally. Smiley, and like it's just one of those things that that camp alone is, uh, is just building up like. Amazing names. It's like the same with uh, Vasco. His camp is building amazing names with Al Remel, Sia, uh, Robert Berridge, and then we go to Isaac Peach, David Peach. Light. Uh, yeah, it's just, um, it stems obviously from the trainer, the community, and the camaraderie, and these three gyms that you just mentioned, um, Mayhem, Peach, and Redline, have obviously got a good recipe, a good formula. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's cooking, cooking champions, eh? Yeah, exactly, and like all of them have like uh, future world champions in each uh, gym. So um, I'm surprised that there's not enough. Uh, there's not more people interested in boxing these days because it's exciting. It's a painful sport, Benji. People <laughs> um, like Mike Tyson said, everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the face. Yeah. So. Well, <laughs> I think I was. Uh, happening in this last show. Um, oh, no, it wasn't this last show. And Andre, uh, last fight against Daniel Maxwell, um, actually he told me this at the weigh-in, that once Daniel Maxwell uh, punched him that hard in the face um, from um, Mal Siossi and Ray Lynn Siossi's uh, show at Multitrade, he was like, no, nah, that's it. I want to end this quickly because he was pissed off. Um, 
we 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 almost need to go a show without mentioning the renegade because he's he's always on our <laughs> books. He's always on our show. No, love the guy. He's um he's such a fire starter and he's entertaining. Looking forward to all his fights. Yeah, he's you know I, I recently just spoke in an interview um, about talk fighters being quite humble. I wouldn't say he's the opposite. He's just very confident. He's putting yeah. his name out there. He's doing what he needs to do to get noticed. I think what boxers don't realize is that you can't be too humble in boxing. Otherwise, it's boring, and you need to not be boring. Otherwise, no one's going to come and uh, buy your show, or no one's going to think, "Oh, I want to come see your show because it's entertaining." And that's what he's got—the total total package. He's winning, he's knocking out, and he's entertaining. So, I'll tell you another good guy there before we wrap up. So, Scope Siossi, you know, comes out with the rose. <laughs> he, he puts bums on seats. So, hey, there's, there's a few guys out there doing their thing, and. <laughs> Yeah, Scope, up a storm. Scope is great, but he's no Andre. <laughs> Not to take anything away from Scope. Love Scope. Love Scope. Uh, yeah, Scope, Scope, Scope is great. Scope is a nice guy and everything, but uh, Scope is no is no Andre. <laughs> um, but that yeah. could definitely be a potential matchup we see, though. You know, um, once Scope is fully. Back from his, um, I think he. So look at the look at the way he comes out. He's issue. doing a dance. He's throwing roses out. He's wearing a cape. I mean, pff, tell me how many other yeah. people have ring entrances like this apart from you know people around the world uh, when they're world champ fighters. So I love it. You gotta love the energy he brings. Look at him right. wearing a cape. He's great. Um, he's entertaining and yeah. Um, okay, we've got only two topics left, so uh, we'll re- uh, we'll go through them as quickly as possible. Uh, this next one is actually. What uh, I think it's good to educate people about this police permits in New Zealand boxing today. Um, which do you know much about the police permits? Um, I know they're annoying. <laughs> so, as uh, we know, we need to do police permits for boxing events as part of the Boxing and Wrestling um, Act of 1981. Um, th- the important thing is, is that this uh, a lot of We've been noticing that there's been a lot of boxing events that were actually illegal boxing shows, um, particularly uh, certain shows that say, oh, it's a kickboxing event, but no kicks were thrown whatsoever throughout the whole night. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just listening. <laughs> um, I won't say any names because there is actually a lot of names that's flying, floating around and is actually very controversial at this present time, especially in the officials' word, world in boxing. But um, it is actually becoming quite an uh, increased thing. And uh, especially on the official side, it's quite annoying for us. And, um, what are the consequences, Benji, if you do host a show and it's deemed illegal and what is your charge a penalty what, what are the repercussions so the repercussions i believe is a thousand dollar fine for each not just for, for the, the company but for each person that's involved so that's the boxer there's that's the um the, the two boxers that's the promoter that's everyone uh, the medical staff the uh the venue itself oh. Um, it's everyone that's involved will get a thousand dollar fine and also not just that um they'll the venue that she holds the uh show that is a legal fight uh illegal boxing fight their liquor license will get removed and um they were not allowed to uh be uh having any uh boxing events at that venue ever again so it's actually quite a serious thing is the responsibility of the promoter and the promoter only to have this organized and how do they do it where do they get it from so well, um, for well, they they need to go through this for a sanctioning body. I mean, like we've got four. Well, we've got a lot of sanctioning bodies. So there's that local amateur bodies like the Auckland Boxing Association going up north to. Oh, I think that's part of Auckland as well. Um, there's like the Wellington Boxing Association. That's the amateur boxing um bodies that's under Boxing New Zealand. And then you go into the professional corporates, which is PBC, Pro Box New Zealand, New Zealand Fe- uh, Boxing Federation, New Zealand Professional Boxing Association. And there's all these people here that can support, make boxing safe. And the only reason they're not being used is because oh, I don't want to spend uh, the extra money t- um, to pay for that. Well, yeah, it, look, Bit of safe than sorry, eh? I mean, um, 
that's all I can say in that regard uh, because there could be some pretty hefty fines if you know. You yeah, and, yeah, um, exactly. And like, um, I remember like. When, when I did my show in September 2016, the I think it was like that weekend, the weekend uh, oh no, it was the same date of, as my show, uh, September 24th. Uh, there was a Hamilton uh, amateur boxing or corporate boxing that was happening at the time, and a boxer died in that show. Um, what if that happened to a kickboxing event? Well, someone that's claimed that it's a kickboxing event, but it wasn't actually a kickboxing event. It was this boxing without sanctioning body. Hey, yeah, like I said, better safe than sorry, and um, it's probably best to um, get these police permits sorted. Yeah, and like um, the thing is, uh, there was actually one question someone has asked me: What's the difference between a sparring event and uh, someone that's sparring and someone that's having an exhibition? Do you know? <laughs> lie to me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, this is very boring, but I'll, I'll, this is actually quite controversial and quite important. So, once someone that's actually bought an admission ticket, or there's a someone that's there's something at stake on the line, or affects a win loss record, uh, then it no longer classes as aspiring. But the most important part, what people try to get away with, is saying, "Oh, it's just sparring." But no, once you've actually bought a ticket to come to the event, it's no longer considered sparring. Okay. So just so everyone knows, you know. Okay, well, before everyone goes to sleep, can we, can okay. we move on from this important yes. um, update? <laughs> last, last, last topic, which is the probably the most exciting one. Joseph Parker versus Dillian White. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look, you're talking about a guy from Brixton got stabbed up before he was 13, had a baby at 13, then got into professional boxing to put, you know, money on the table, um, better his career from 13, uh, from a family of 13. This is obviously yeah. Dillian White, the body snatcher, yeah. against our very own Joseph Parker. I'm do, 50, do we have, 50 on this. Do, do we have a poll at the moment, Gladrap? Yeah, let's have a look, eh? So who do we have? It's, uh, oh, it's 40, 27. 49, 40 going, 27. Yeah, 40 going Maybe towards we'll, uh, Joseph Parker. Uh, we've, got to be, we've got to remember it will be biased because it's a New Zealand poll. Um, yes, that's true. Where's Isaac? Who did he? Oh, Benji thinks Joseph Parker's <laughs> gonna win. Uh, where's Isaac? I, I, I'm pretty biased. <laughs> hey, but let's, uh -oh. let's go. Let's Isaac, go down to it. what is this? <laughs> Isaac, what's up, man? Let, let's break it down. Let's break it down. <laughs> it's someone's going down. If if it goes the distance, Joseph Parker will win on points, or he will eventually drop Dillian White later in the rounds. If Dillian White can catch him early, I know it's a safe prediction, but if Dillian White can catch Joseph Parker early, it's lights out. I think this is a risky fight. I, I'm quite surprised that Parker's camp's taking it. But, man, if he beats him, which hopefully he he does um, for the pride of New Zealand and, and the boxing community, it puts him back up. We'll, we'll contention spot. Did you watch the, um, what's it called, the gloves are off? The tabletop. Yeah, I'll let you go first on that. <laughs> no, no. My my question is, who do you think won mentally? Dillian White. You know, I am very biased to, for Joseph Parker to winning, and I voted for Joseph Parker to winning. But I agree with you. I think Dillian White won the mental game um, in this uh, gloves are off uh, in, um, uh, show. He bought out everything. Like he bought out David Higgins. Uh, you know what I mean? Like he he bought out everything. He didn't let anything back. You know. But just just because Dillian White won that doesn't mean uh, he's he's going to. But he's already starting to begin that that mental warfare. Uh, Joseph Park is a, a nice like a humble guy. He's not a shit talker. He's not going to get up in the face and do dance or Conor McGregor type moves. And Dillian White, I don't think he's faking it. Dillian White's a G. Like he's from yeah. the hood, um, and he's just saying what's on his mind. I've seen some people come out saying, oh, Dillian White's a talker, he's this and that, but I think Dillian White's just being real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, it's, he like, well, both guys don't talk, like, fa the, both guys aren't fake, faking it. Both guys are, like, bringing their A game and they're really uh, wanting to go in there. But I just felt that the mentality of uh, Dillian White is more much stronger this time. Not that he's going to win the fight, but... That that gives him an advantage, and yeah. Also, it's like quite interesting that Joseph Parker also mentioned the fact that um, 
he had um, that he did once. Oh, Dillian White was questioning if that uh, Joseph Parker has never been in the deep end. And Parker said, well, I have been in the deep end. I've had that cut eye. I had the uh, best uh, eardrum. So it's just interesting that he brought that up as well. It's very rich, though, Dillian White saying you haven't been in deep water when Dillian White got knocked out by AJ and Joseph Parker went 12 rounds. Well, that, that, that's the that's the um, I, the point is that he has been in the deep end. He's been knocked out where, um, and he knows how how that's felt where Joseph Parker has not. I think um, post post this glad rap thing, we need to chat the likes of um, Chris Chris Martin again. Uh, I always love his expert oh, yeah. analysis, yeah. and I'd love to see him break down this because you know. My breakdown, your breakdown is never going to be as technical um, as like him, maybe Mike Ango, um, a few other experts in the game. I'd be great think, to talk to them. I think like we should say talk to multiple people, like not just Chris Martin, but we've got um, Mike Ango, as you just said, even like Vasco, Lance Revel, um, Steve Scott, um, like all all those people. Um, Higgins, Isaac. Oh yeah, <laughs> Andrew Higgins. <laughs> <laughs> If he comes out of hiding, um, <laughs> he will have something to say. See, my question is who looked like they wanted it more from that table talk? Who looked like they were going to die for that victory? Oh, that's a good question. I think Dillian White, um, he it, looked it hungry. seems like I feel like Dillian White's a little bit hungrier, but Joseph Parker is a more skilled boxer, he's quicker. I don't know if he's more powerful, uh, but I think he's a more skilled boxer. But I mean. I did like Dillian's point saying you didn't look like you put it all on the line. You didn't risk it. You didn't go crazy yeah. or haywire. You fought a, a safe fight. And, hey, it's all good me f saying this from the couch. It looked like that in a way. But in this fight, Dillian's going to come forward. It's almost that brawl to your full style. And how's it going to do against Parker? Parker's quick. He's going to move oh. out of the way. We we will find out this Sunday. <laughs> and plus, not to mention that you know Dillian White's shoulder was off, like from the second round onwards. So he was fighting AJ with one hand. I, if you're looking for a place to watch it too, it's going to be at the Fox Sport Bar, uh, right on the Viaduct. So if you do want to come down and watch it, free, yeah, uh, come down there. Yeah, yeah, and I think uh, there's a couple of places on North Shore, I believe. Maybe what's it called? The backyard bar. They're, they're also doing it in the North Shore. So yeah, we've got the Fox in the city. We've got the backyard bar in the North Shore. So there is no excuse to miss this fight, especially for if you live in those two areas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what's next for Isaac? Um, you're still recovering. If you uh from your injury, what what's next for you though? Well, we've got Craig Thompson's show um this weekend. We've got then um Anzac the day after. And, uh, you know, there's a few events too, but, you know, th that's basically what's next on the cards um, in the next few days. And then obviously Joseph Parker, Dillian White Sunday. It's an absolute crazy, crazy week of boxing. Uh, when you think about it, one, two, three, four events um, all in the space of four days. That's all I can think, think of for now. Um, it changes every week. What about you, Benji? Well, I'm looking forward to not just the um, the fight night uh, this week. I'm doing backstage for Craig Thompson's show. I would love to see the um, Anzac show as well. I'll see what I'm doing around that time. And then uh, I believe we've got uh, – I have to look at my calendar. <laughs> uh, well, next week we'll do another episode um, of What's What with Benji, and we'll do the reaction of Joseph Parker and the reaction – sorry – the reaction of Joseph Parker and the reaction of um, the Anzac show as well. So I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully we're talking um, of the positives and a win from Joseph Parker and obviously, like you said, all the, the great results from Craig Thompson show and Regan Foley's Anzac show. And, like, if Joseph Parker wins, he goes away with two belts as well. So There you go. That's fantastic. Up the stake. Yes, all right. Exactly. Up, up some stake, yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was episode two of What's What with Benji Watt. Isaac Savage, thank you very much for being our special guest. Thank you for sharing your views and, and sharing your time. And, uh, of course, thank you to Benji. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, please uh, like, share, and subscribe these videos. And uh, looking forward to episode three next week. Woo! See you, guys. See ya.